That's why I have a freaking business called Momentum, right? Because I'm trying to help bone people, yeah. right? So. Hey, what is going on? Welcome back to Chia Talks. My name is Chia, and if this is your first time here, consider subscribing. If you find value in my videos, I upload videos just like this every week, so you can definitely look forward to it. So what you guys are getting ready to watch is the four part series of an interview that I did not too long ago with Jonathan Yang, the CEO of Momentum. And if this is your first time here, you gotta go back and watch the first three parts of this series. You can find the links to those videos down below in the descriptions, or you can click at one of these uh, cards up here that's gonna pop up and that'll take you to the playlist of this interview. This interview has been pretty exciting, you know? Like, I've learned so much just from interviewing Jonathan alone, and hopefully you guys find value in this interview. If you had to do everything all over again, what would you do? Different? Well, okay, I would say this. I think uh, so many things I, I would have done. I mean, I will say this, and, I, and, and, I, and I, I'm serious about this. I would not have quit my job so soon, right? Um, uh, just it, it, it was I was spontaneous very yes excited exactly right now <laughs> now I want to be clear though um, because having done it you know we're, we're everybody always has a everyone is terrible at predicting what they think is gonna kind of make them happy right? right we're just terrible as human beings we're terrible at that right we like the lottery right now the billion dollar lottery someone's gonna win that and think oh if I just win the lottery my life is gonna be set That's their life true. is gonna be terrible yeah. afterwards I think it's gonna be I, I, I hope I never win the lottery because yeah. I think my life would just be even worse right because and so um, so we, we're just terrible at predicting what we think is gonna make us feel good and so at that time I thought quitting my job and doing that was gonna be like the solution to mm. you know but but it wasn't I, I i think i think i could have worked full time and i think i could have just worked more smarter in terms of what i did after work right mm. okay. i think i think uh uh so so a lot of the considerations that i would do all over again would just be practical considerations right okay. because I, I do have a wife and i don't have kids yet right so that is, that is a thing that I'm, I'm thankful that I don't have a, a little one to take care of yet. But with me and my wife, it, it's been tough. It's been really tough uh, the, this past year. I mean, just trying to scrape by and, you know, it, it does take time to build momentum. You know, like you said, For later sure. on, it's, it's not going to be as difficult as the beginning. Pushing a giant boulder is going to be hard in the beginning than once it starts. But once to, it starts to exactly. roll, yeah, you can't stop it. So, um... So what a lot of things I do differently is is I would I would really invest in 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 other people or in systems or automation, right? right. So I I just being my personality, I took a lot of things on my own shoulder, you know, and and because I thought, okay, I know what I should do, and this I'm gonna do this, I do this, and I and I because that's I, I'm a shoot from the hip kind of guy, you know. So I don't want to wait for someone else. I'm just gonna yeah. do it right now. Yeah, right? nobody could do it better than me. Well, yeah, that, that, <laughs> I, I'm sure people could do it better than me, but it was I was more impatient, right? I was more impatient. I'm like that too. Then, then think because I know I suck at a lot of things, but but I want to now, you know. So I'm gonna do action now, and so that's both a strength and the big weakness. Yeah. And so uh, I w I would have been a little bit more patient about that. Um, I would have, like I said, I would have invested in in some just really good. There's just so many automated technology and software to make things better. I would have invested in in, in in people who saw my vision and really kind of give people more ownership early on. Okay. And so I, I would have invested in people in automation, kind of build infrastructure so that uh, financially, it, you know, it, it would have been, I'm not, I'm not saying that everybody should wait for the perfect moment, but you know, it could have been a little bit easier, you know, financially, yeah. All right, man, that, that, that was good. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, definitely, dude, like, I, I don't think there's a such thing as a perfect time. Yeah. You know, like the perfect time is five years ago. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but the second chance is now, right, right? Right. So I think, I think um, that's part of a thing that slows a lot of the yeah. generation right now down too. Is they think about the perfect time. Yeah, I gotta have all the money. Right. I right. gotta have all the infrastructure. I gotta yeah. have all the resource and supporters, and yeah. then I'll be successful. That's not true, you know. Like I think when you step into this entrepreneurship, like entrepreneurship is you learning how to maneuver, delegate, and find out things on your own without yeah. asking others for help, right? Yeah. Like Gary Vaynerchuk says, says that all the time, to where like, man, I have all these content on my YouTube channel, yeah. and you're too lazy to go and look for it, yeah. and you're asking me right. to tell you what exactly. it is. Exactly. You know, and, and yeah. that's, that's where we're at right now. People just kind of want yeah. 
things being spoon fed right. instead of going out working for it, you know. Yeah. And I, so I think what you're doing is great yeah. because at least you're doing it. Right. And yeah, you did quit your job, yeah. but then like, it's that's in the past. Yeah, that's exactly and, right. And so like yeah. right now, you know, yeah. you're failing forward. Right. Now that's one of the that's one of the things where like you know it, it's 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 a double edged sword because okay let me just say one point about about the timing right because I think I thought this way and I want other people to to not think this way which is that going to start something doesn't require me doesn't require that you stop everything else right? right and that's one of the things that I want to try to tell people is with the internet with the phone with what we're doing right now right. If you want to start your own talk show, yeah, you can do it, right? Uh, a lot of the people that we had on HCon in Minnesota, like uh, Calvin Yang, who has Dictum Dose, he does the, the Moan Proverbs video, oh, okay. things like that. Um, he 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 is he does his own. He has a family. He's a dad, um, but he just takes you know 10, 15 minutes out of a day, records a video on a phone, and upload it, right? And so I, I want to encourage people that starting doesn't mean stopping everything else, right? Yeah, okay. You can take little steps, right? Okay. Little steps. Uh, uh, take little risks. Um, everybody has their own media production kit in their phone, right? So they can do it. It's just a matter of taking those little steps, right? So I, I for me, I thought starting it means in my head, Stopping I, everything I just like right because that's kind of the guy I am. I don't have a <laughs> lot of uh, uh, to use a, a computer analogy. I don't have a lot of RAM. I don't have a lot of. I can't run a lot of apps at once. I can only do one thing at a time. So like, I can't focus on my nine to five. I gotta quit that and focus on this, you know. So that's just how my brain works. But I think. Um, you know, once I start to see that that's not true, you know, I could do this, do things here and there, be consistent, and uh, I'll be patient. I think that's really important. Um, you know, in, in terms of you know, right timing is always now to start something. It doesn't sure. mean you have to quit everything else, but you can always start something and, and try something new. Okay, so so you uh, you uh, just kind of remind me of one more question. Yeah, this will be the final one. Don't I promise. Ask, I'd be, I'd ask if you have one well. tip, yeah. one tip for any young entrepreneur yeah. right now. That has a, f a passion for what they want to do. Yeah. What would be that one tip to that young entrepreneur? I, I, it depends on what it is, but I think I think I think. Uh, uh, look, it's gonna sound cheesy, but I'll say the cheesy thing and then some detailed stuff. Which is, uh, they just need to do something about it, right? They need to act on it, right? So I don't know what it is. Um, here's what I let me just. Here's what I hear from a lot of young young people, right? That tell me things. They they tell me things like, uh, and I I believe them. They say I want to do something meaningful for my community, right? I, I believe them, right? I think I think every Hmong person has that instinct, you know. Like yeah. we want to. That's why I have a freaking business called Momentum, right? Because I'm trying to help Hmong people, yeah. right? So I think everybody has that instinct, and I think young people have that instinct as well. They, they say, I want to do something, uh, like that's that's what I'm passionate about, or whatever, helping my community. Uh, but here's what follows from that is, but they say, but uh, but I gotta wait, I gotta wait, and let me, I gotta finish school first, and then. Maybe once I get a job, and then once I become somebody, or once I, um, w once people will listen to me, uh, then then I can impact my community. That's false. That's a hundred percent false, true. right? You, that's that's asking for permission again, right? There are people who will benefit and who will who who will learn from a nineteen-year-old college freshman. Uh, a sophomore in high school can learn from that freshman in college, right? They have mistakes that they've made that that you know younger person can learn from so one thing I would tell people is uh, whatever they're passionate about I'm, I'm hunch over like 99% sure the thing stopping them is some fear of like failure or rejection right that's probably the one thing that's preventing them from stopping that so my advice would be um, well maybe it just wasn't a big enough vision it could be that too it could be that too and I, I would tell people to just test everything out Try everything out. Yeah, it, just do it. Just do it, and uh, you know, people have very short memories, anyways. People will forget. You know, a lot of us think that people are always gonna like. You know, uh, people. I don't even think anybody remembers my early interviews. Mm. I, I would challenge anyone who can tell me my first interview I ever did. I bet no one knows. I know because I did it right, and it, and I always remember how Your bad interview, it was. Being interview or interview no, somebody I else. I interviewed somebody. Oh, okay. Right. And so nobody, no, most people know me by HCon now because that's been the most things, right? A lot of people even forget that I had a you know a podcast, right, where I just did audio. So you know things like this, uh, people forget. People are busy. They have their own lives, right? Sure. And so I would encourage young people. Just try things out, test things out, don't be afraid. Um, and uh, practically what that looks like, just record a video, make a post, go on Facebook Live, just start talking about the things you're passionate about. Just just start talking about it. That's what I did, you know? Yeah. I just started doing the things and sharing with people what I was passionate about and, and things happen, you know? So whether it's sports or community or I don't know, 
to start talking about it. Um, that's 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 really what people people consume other people's content. For you know? sure. So, For sure. Yeah. Okay. That's good, man. <laughs> well, hey, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, shit. Thanks so much, dude. Yeah, man. It was fun. A lot of fun. It was fun. fun. It was fun. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that interview. Man, I loved how real Jonathan was. So, you know how sometimes you speak to people and they only give you like surface level information? I loved how when I did this interview with Jonathan, not only was he real, but he showed a lot of humility. You know, like he showed a lot of the realness of what really happened, what really went down as he was starting momentum. And some of those things he was still going through. And some part of those struggles were he, if he had to go back and do everything all over again, he mentioned that he would not have quit his job so soon. And I think we could learn a lot from that. Just thinking that we are passionate about something don't necessarily mean we have to let go of what we already have in order to accomplish what we want. And I love how Jonathan shared his heart about that. Hopefully you guys got a lot from this video. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching all four parts of this video. If you have not watched the other three parts of this series, you might want to go back and do that. Again, links in the descriptions down below for the playlist of the interview. But I want to hear your thoughts. Like, what did you learn from these four part series of the interview? How do you like the way I laid out this interview part series? Do you like it? Yay? Nay? Should I do more of it? Yay? Nay? Share me your thoughts down below. I would love to read your comments and just get some ideas or get some feedback regarding the way I've been doing these interviews. But without further ado, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.